What is going on guys? It's your boy Chris here, back with a new video. I know it's been a bit. It's been a it's been a little while. Uh I've been a little bit busy between packing and moving and new job training. I haven't exactly been available to do any of these, but something happened this week that uh I had to talk about. Actually there have been two things that have happened this past week that I've had to talk about. Um the first one being AEW's new TV deal. Um, to quote Tony, we secure the bag. They got paid. Not nearly as much as everybody expected them to, but they got their TV deal. So good for them. It's like a three year deal with a four year, op with the fourth op optional fourth year for like between 150 and 185 million dollars. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. There's just one small problem. Um, you're still going to pay all your talent. You're still losing out on... Your attendance is dwindling like a motherfucker. And your ratings are, are dropping like a rock. Also note in this deal, no Ring of Honor announcement. No news about Rampage getting picked up. So you've just got this. You've got Dynamite. You've got Collision. And you've got some streaming on HBO Max or something. But nothing really devolves about the nature of the streaming. So it's like, okay, they're streaming on a Max. But what's streaming? Are they going to be streaming their pay-per-views on Max? Are they going to be streaming their show Dynamite on Max the next day? Are they going to be streaming Collision next day? Like, because that would be cool if they did that. That'd be very cool if they did that. But there's been no real breakdown of how that's going to work by anybody. And this is something that all these all these uh, journalists should be asking that question that Tony or David Zaslav, who, by the way, bro, you played yourself. You paid way too much for an AEW. They're not worth this much. They're not worth two billion dollars or whatever the fuck. Whoever the fuck was saying that shit was, I can't remember who the fuck said that dumb shit. But they were never worth that much. They're not worth that much now. They never have been. Um, but the bigger problem with AEW, and this is the main reason I'm doing this video, is the ratings. Because Tuesday night. They went head-to-head, -head, kind of, sort of, with NXT. They aired their first hour during NXT second hour, right? NXT drew 874,000 viewers on the CW. AEW drew 329,000 viewers. You read, You heard that right. 329,000 viewers. Here are the excuses you're going to hear. Oh, they were on a different night. Baseball. Here's the thing. They announced well in advance that they were airing on Tuesday night at a special time at 9 o'clock. So all their fans knew that they were airing on Tuesday night. And as for baseball, baseball was airing. During NXT too, but NXT still drew 800,000 viewers to watch their show. So, the argument about baseball, not trying to hear that. The argument about a different night, not trying to hear that. The problem is, the product is stale as shit. That's why people aren't going anymore. Because their attendance is nose diving. The numbers have been nose diving for the viewership. And you and they just locked up with Warner Brothers Discovery for another three years. Or so they hope. Because if there's one thing we know about the acts of David Zaslav, he doesn't give a fuck how popular a show is or whatever. If it costs too much, he will cut that bitch loose. Don't believe me? 
ask the people that worked on that Scooby-Doo series or Scooby-Doo movie that got axed. Ask the people that did Batgirl about getting axed by Warner Brothers. Just because they have a three-year deal does not mean they're fucking safe because shows get canceled in the middle of renewals all the fucking time. And when you're Warner Brothers Discovery and they cut shows left and fucking right, no matter how they're doing, it doesn't fucking matter. That two or three, that three year deal could be written on a piece of fucking napkin for all it fucking matters. Because it doesn't mean shit as far as them being guaranteed a spot on television. WCW had a guaranteed spot on television. They still got fucking canceled. ECW had a spot on television. On TNN. They got canceled. For Raw. So, so don't believe the hype. That just because they have a TV deal. That they're safe. Because they're not. And for all you AEW fans who are gloating and stuff. Reality smacks you in the face real fucking hard when those ratings hit. When those ratings hit. Also note. NXT outdrew last week's Rampage. Last week's Collision. And this week's Dynamite. Combined. Those three shows combined. Did not draw the same number that NXT did on Tuesday. Dynamite can't consistently outdraw WWE's developmental show on a third-rate network on regular television. Think about that. They can't outdraw a developmental show on a network like the CW. And y'all think that AEW is really competition for WWE? They've never been competition for WWE. There's no new wrestling war to be had. If there was, AEW already lo- has already lost. Paying out the ass for contracts for wrestlers who maybe aren't worth that much. They're doing it. They paid Mercedes Monet all that money. She's done fuck all there. They paid MJF all that money. He's done fuck all since. They paid Okada. He's done fuck all. They paid Will Ospreay. Actually, Will Ospreay, to his credit, is the only one actually getting doing shit. He's it. Out of all those guys that they brought in, the big Four people that they re-signed or brought in. The only one that's doing anything of worth is Will Ospreay. They re-signed Swerve. Good for Swerve. I'm happy for him. They got Ricochet. Okay. He didn't do anything different than like half the fucking roster, but all right. Cool. Bet. Whatever. Get your money, man. Get your money. Ain't nobody here mad at you for getting paid, brother. I'm damn sure not. But, um... You're wrestling in front of crickets, bro. So, good for you. I mean, this is the same company that brought in Nick Gage, right? And this came up, thus heard this the other day. They brought in Nick Gage. And we all remember the controversy with the Domino's commercial while Nick Gage is cutting Chris Jericho's head with a pizza cutter. And somehow Joey Janela got brought into it and was like, you know, they told him, like, you can't tell, you and GCW can't talk about this. And it's like, and he's like, fuck do I have to do with that? You brought in Nick Gage. What the fuck were you expecting him to fucking do? It's Nick fucking Gage. MDK all fucking day. It's Nick Gage. 
He's not Matt Cardona. It's not Dolph Ziggler or Nick Nemeth. It's Nick fucking Gage. That's like bringing in Abdul to the Butcher and getting mad he stabbed the motherfucker with a fork. What do you expect him to do? It's Nick Gage. It's the deathmatch guy. He's going to do deathmatch shit on your fucking show. And you brought him in to do it. And then you have the nerve to get mad that he did deathmatch stuff and pissed off a sponsor? It's your fucking fault for bringing him in. You have Megan Bain signed. Megan Bain could have been a fucking, could be a fucking star. Like she's built like a real life Wonder Woman. Okay? You've had her signed for however long. She's been fucking sitting at home or fucking working shows in Japan till you found something to do with her and her contract ran out. Without you even really putting her to putting her out there and using her to build something of your own into a fucking star. Think about that for a second. They've had Megan Bain sign forever and then they didn't bring her in. They didn't use her. And her contract ran out. If I'm Megan Bain, I'm like seeing if anybody, there's any interest from WWE. Because look at what they're doing with Julia right now. Look what they're doing with Stephanie Vaquer right now. Look what they're doing with the Delta hype videos. You think they couldn't do something with a girl who's built like Wonder Woman? Who's built like a Greek goddess? Whose gimmick is I'm a Greek god? You think that Hunter and Sean can't do something with her? Boy. I would sign her today if I'm WWE. Just to fuck with AEW. Just to say, hey, y'all fuck, y'all fumbled this chick. Watch what we fucking do. You know what I'm saying? Because I would book her today. Today I would book her. I'd put her out there right now. And she would be the... A, I would put her on my on NXT. I would build her up. I would make her a fucking star. Because she has the ability to be that. She's alright in the ring. And she's got a look. Like I said, she's built like a legitimate... like. Greek statue. Like she's built. Like for real. If you haven't seen Megan Bain, go look her up. Like she's she's got that body. She's got that type of look to her. She could literally be cast as Wonder Woman tomorrow. I don't know if she can act. But if they want to recast Wonder Woman, that'd be who you get. She could fill out the costume and all that shit. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, like, I'm being real with it. Like, I'd use her, I'd, book, I'd sign her today. Straight up. I would sign her. So, you know, you've got that situation, right? And you've got, you've got that type of shit. Camille, they had her sign back in January. She just fucking showed up on television as a fucking heater for Mercedes Monet? She should be gunning for Mercedes. Got it for the fucking title. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Wait. Did they not see her running NWA? And see how good she is or what she can do? Like, what the fuck? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Y'all want to glaze this fucking program up and, like, hit them up like they're the greatest things since sliced bread? Y'all can do it all you fucking want, but for real, the problems are with the AEW are right in your fucking face. And if you don't want to see it, I don't know what the fuck they tell you at this point. But I'm going to say it now. They are not long for this world. Okay? People say, oh, Tony's got money. As long as he's got money, at some point, the money's going to get cut off. Because it's not his money. It's his dad's money. And if Shad doesn't start seeing a seeing a return on investment, he will cut that bitch off. Straight up. 
Because he's a businessman. And wrestling is a business man. So if you don't understand that, I don't know what to tell you. So uh, that's the wrestling portion of this video because I'm done talking about that for right now. Um, on a more, another fun note, uh, Joker 2 bombed at the box office, which I don't think, I think shocked a lot of people. Um, I was, I'm actually shocked by the box office. I didn't see that coming because uh, I thought it was going to be like well-reviewed and stuff like that. And apparently... Everybody fucking hates it. Um, <laughs> I, apparently, it's a total deconstruction of what they did in the first movie, and people ain't happy because they wanted more of the um of the Joker from that movie. But it wasn't really the first movie was not really a Joker movie. It was about Arthur Fleck. And his descent into madness. And now he's dealing with the aftermath of it all. And realizing, oh shit. So I mean like. Because in real life. And this is something that, you know, people talk about. Oh, we want our movies granted real, real, reality. Okay. Well, here's reality. If you shoot a talk show host on live television. If they bring you in alive, you're Fuck. <laughs> You're going to jail or an insane asylum or wherever the fuck they put you because that's reality. You don't get out and run away and commit more crimes. You get locked up for the rest of your life in an institution or in prison. That's real life. And people didn't want that. They thought they did, but they didn't. And that's what happens. So y'all, y'all are mad about it now. It's like, that's not the Joker we would if you would have the Joker. Well, this is what would happen to the Joker in real life. There wouldn't be any grand escapes from Arkham. There wouldn't be any of that shit. You're just done. Movie with the sequel should have been five minutes. They throw him in jail and that's it. Credits. Also, making it a musical. Musical. Probably not the best of ideas. Giving a director whose only known previous work was really the Hangover movies, who made this first movie a success, complete control over everything, also not a good idea. Um, That's reserved for guys like Spielberg and Martin Scorsese and like... Guys like uh, Francis Ford Coppola. Well, maybe not him so much anymore after Megalopolis failed. Um, but um, guys like Kubrick. Stanley Kubrick. Uh, those guys. You maybe give them complete control or something like that. But even then, maybe a Denis Villeneuve. Maybe a Christopher Nolan. Maybe you give them that. But even then you probably still shouldn't give them complete creative control over a movie because it's not going to go well. Every studio should be able to say, hey, hold on a fucking second, man. What the fuck? Wait, wait, scale this back. You know, rein it in a little bit. Every movie, every movie studio should be able to do that with their directors because there's a point where you go too far or you go too far off the reservation and somebody needs to reel your ass in. That's what the movie, that's what the studio is for, supposed to do. He, they weren't able to do that with him because of his deal with them, and they got what they asked for. They got a disjointed fucking mess of a movie from all accounts, and you get what you asked for in that case. I don't feel bad about it, and I'm not a big Todd Phillips person to begin with. I think it's funny he subverted everybody's expectations and basically... Sent everybody a big fuck you. Because that's what apparently this movie is. Like, this is what you get for asking me to do a sequel to a movie I didn't want to do a sequel to. Suck my dick. Because that's what he did. He told everybody to suck his dick. 
I can remember on one level I respect it, but on the other, like that's fucked up, dude. So anyway, that's Joker 2. The last thing I want to talk about, I want to get serious for a minute. Um, look, we all know that Hurricane Milton just came in right after Hella Hurricane Helene uh, tore Florida apart. Um, obviously, people are still hurting in those areas. Um, in the Carolinas, people are hurting. In Florida, people are really fucking hurting right now. So, I'm not going to throw out anybody special. But you know the usual places to go, like Red Cross, um, you know, donations for like blood and stuff like that. You know, help out, do what you can. Um, anything helps. Um, uh, any charities that are doing work down there to help out people that need it right now. This is when we we step up as Americans and show that we're not about it, but you know, what unites us is bigger than what separates us. And right now, our fellow Americans need our help. So I urge everybody out there, I implore everyone to step up and do their part to help out. Like, straight up, man. I'm being as real as possible. You know, people really need help right now, and we should step up and do that for them. Um, I didn't do anything special for my birthday, uh, as far as any type of wishes or anything like that. So if I have one wish... For anybody watching this, or anybody that shares this video, or anybody who puts this out there, straight up, you know, do your part to help those in need right now. Um, that's all I can ask. Uh, that's all I can ask of anybody right now. Um, don't just do it for me because I'm asking. Do it because it's the right thing to do. It's the decent thing to do. It's the humane thing to do. Or is this just helping animals out, helping people out, getting food and supplies down there? Any little bit helps. If people are taking food donations, take down like a can, like canned goods, stuff like that. Like take down non-perishable items, like like pasta, like jugs of water. You know, if, if people are taking those donations, do that. You know, the usual shit that people need in these times like this, you know, help out. Like, that's all I can ask. And it'd be doing me a solid. I have a lot. I have friends and family down in Florida. Um, My mom has friends down there. And we all know, like, my family's from the Carolinas, from North Carolina. So I got friends down there and in South Carolina. Like, those people need help. So... If there's anything you can do, please step up and do it. Any little bit helps. Like I said, any little bit helps. You know. So that that's all I've got for this one. Um, I say it all the time, but in this one, I really mean it. Take care of yourselves and be safe out there. Um, if you're down in those areas that have been affected by these hurricanes, you know, be safe, be well, um, know that you're in my thoughts and all that stuff. Um, like I said, take care of yourselves and more importantly than taking care of yourself, take care of each other because at times like this, it's what we need. We need to step up and help our neighbors. Put aside all the bullshit and just do the right thing to help the people around you that you, you, you know need it. Peace.